about patch 6.08, there was a thing that uh, actually s slipped my notice the first time I heard about the Radio Mog Station interview that uh, Yoshida-san did. There was a little detail, uh, maybe not a not so little detail, I, that skipped my notice, and that was about patch 6.08 and the balance changes that we can expect with that patch. So, apparently, apparently, uh, there's going to be some job balancing where Samurai, Monk, and Black Mage will all be getting damage boosts. This is uh, this was reported on a couple of websites, but I thought this one was very clear. Samurai Monk and Black Mage will all get buffs. Dancer will get additional firepower, according to Yoshida. Will dancers get fire four? <laughs> Just give me fire four. Um, that that'll be good. Paladin mains who have seen the biggest nerfs within Walker will also be happy to know that the job's DPS is getting a boost. All in all, the upcoming update will focus on buffing the weaker classes rather than nerfing the powerful ones. Uh, so yeah, the reason for this dancer damage is low, so its output will be increased. Black Mage and Samurai are too solo oriented, so further tuning will fix that. I saw this reported in more than one spot, and I don't really know what how tuning can fix this. Right, like, tuning to me, that means changing numbers, changing potency numbers. Solo oriented means doesn't have group utility. So, I don't know how you can fix this problem with tuning, but maybe, maybe it can just do so much damage. I, I don't know. Bunk, Samurai, and Black Mage will get damage buffs to better reflect how busy the jobs themselves are. So does this mean if you don't play perfectly, your damage buff will compensate for that? But no, there are people that are playing perfectly that are still um, falling a little behind in damage-wise just because of where the jobs sit right now, which we'll talk about in a second. Paladin potencies are also getting an upgrade, which is sorely needed right now. Uh, so I say it's sorely needed because I saw this tweet. So whenever the world first race ended, uh, I saw Momo post this current breakdown of the most popular jobs of the ones who have cleared P4S right now. So this is world first raiders, world first proggers. And we see, well, let's see if I can make this bigger. So you can actually see it. Uh, so with tanks, most dark knight and gunbreaker, these are jobs that are doing a lot of damage right now. Warrior and Paladin doing less damage, so, and Paladin at 12%, so a lot of people were really unhappy to see this, and I assume this is one of the reasons why Paladin is gonna be getting a buff in 6.08. The, uh, but we'll talk about Worry in a second too. Healers, Scholar, and Astrologian, very, a lot of representation there, though Scholar, I think, is king right now because of actually Expedient. Everybody memed on it. Whenever the job changes were first announced for Inwalker, everybody was like, oh, Scholar is only getting this little run, and that's nothing. Oh, Scholar is gonna boof every, buff everybody's speed. Like, how nice. <laughs> and everyone, like, Scholar mains felt like shit because everybody was like, who's gonna play Scholar now? Scholar, dead job. And guess what? Everybody wants Scholar now that people are actually doing Savage and they see how incredible it is to have the book it ability from the scholar in your group it's incredible like having this movement on demand for people once you've had it you get hooked on it and you you're like you look around and you're like damn there's not a scholar in my group to get me out of this situation <laughs> and also you have to consider too looking at in terms of shield healers scholar versus sage i think there were a lot of people who had already a lot of experience on Scholar, Sage being a new job, people maybe not as experienced with it. And if you're gonna go do world first, do world prog maybe, with a, something as complicated as shield healing can be, maybe there were a lot of people who, on top of having Expedient available, also just wanted to stick with a job that they were comfortable with, that they had a lot of experience with, experience and experience with. Uh, so, as however, looking at Astrologian and White Mage, Honestly, they're not that far apart. Like one being green, one being red. Yeah, there's less white mage, but maybe it's just because, you know, the card buffs, the macrocosm is really, really strong. 
and so but this is not like a giant difference really i don't i don't think this is necessarily a huge deal especially considering how easy white mage is to pick up for people in terms of melee dps reaper is dominating <laughs> and uh i mean it's it just does a buttload of damage right now so like it's way and above any other pretty much every group had a reaper i assume and uh, Monk doing actually really well. I'm sure a lot of Monk mains are happy to see this when for a while it did feel like the uh, unwanted stepchild of the me melee DPS jobs, but uh, Monk has made a little bit of a comeback and now Monk will be getting even more buffs in 6.08, so that's good news too. And so will Samurai also getting buffs. Now, this is a little bit misleading when it comes to Ninja. Ninja's at 2%, but I think that whenever this happened, Ninja had some issues that were fixed like the day Savage was out or the day before. And so maybe the fixes came too late for people to get more accustomed to Ninja. At least that's what I, that's what I assume. Cause there was major fixes that went out like right away. Dragoon, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't really know why. Maybe people are just looking at Reaper versus Dragoon and they're going with Reaper because you don't have animation lock problems like Dragoon has. You don't have the, uh, like it's it's probably, I don't think ease of play is something to consider here because we're talking about, this is about world first progress. Okay, these people can play either job perfectly. <laughs> but um, I guess it's just a matter of Reaper doing more damage, just having more damage output. In terms of range DPS, uh, Dancer, what's that? <sighs> Dancer, what's that? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dancer is not there at all. Now, as a Reaper uh, main now, some people might think, oh, but is that the real reason that you stopped maining Dancer is because the damage is so bad and Reaper damage is so good and it's not what it looks like. I swear, I swear it's not what it looks like. I, that's not why. That's not why. That's not. But, I mean, <laughs> actually, look, from a Reaper's perspective, I can say, now this is a problem that has been fixed now, but originally I think that Dancer had an, a bit of a clashing issue with the main raid-wide group buff that Reaper provides. It's kind of complicated to explain, but before they fixed it, it was like, okay, when I press the big raid-wide buff for the party, there's like a couple of seconds where everybody needs to hit the boss with a weapon skill. but during that time, the dancer is dancing. They're not hitting the boss, they're dancing. They're getting ready to put out their finish, their Talana. And so that's not contributing towards the stacks I'm accumulating for my big uh, eight, like button, my big damage button. So ideally you want like everybody to hit the boss, you get eight out of eight stacks and you do big damage, right? But if you had a dancer who's gonna be dancing during that, during that time, then you would get seven out of eight stacks. And so you wouldn't do as much damage. Now they fixed this problem. It's not an issue anymore, but I wonder if that clashing was a reason, like just another reason why people are like, we'll just pick Bard instead. But, uh, wow, what a 95% Bard, 95% Bard. Who could have expected? Who could have thought? Uh, I know people were saying in the, in the comments, I saw people saying like top 10 anime comebacks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sure. Machinus is still perfectly viable though, and I'll talk about that in a second too, Nightmold, because uh, that's really important to mention as well. As far as casters, Prog Mage winning out. Prog Mage kicking ass. It's just really, really good for Prog. Everybody who's ever had a Red Mage in your group when you were wiping, you know that. Um, it's just does great damage. Great to have that extra res. And um, yes, Summoner also has an extra res, but Red Mage is doing more damage than Summoner right now, as far as I'm aware. Black Mage just takes more time to adjust to a fight, getting all your positioning ready for a fight. Uh, so I think that's why Red Mage is reigning supreme. Again, all this being for the world 
first people, world first froggers and raiders. Uh, so a lot of times, and this is something that I've went, oh, before I get into this, regarding the need for the paladin buffs. So this is another tweet that I wanted to bring your attention to that I thought was really good. So uh, here, a lot of people don't seem to understand that people asking for paladin buffs are not saying to make it do as much damage as Dark Knight. Here's an image to explain. And uh, so if you look, Dark Knight is here, Gunbreaker is here, Warrior's a little less, like I say, a little less, a little less. And Paladin, we want Paladin to be here, right? So that it's all like, makes sense, okay, even. Uh, but Paladin need, is like, this is like 4,200. It needs to be closer to 4,500. This is not a giant deal. Okay, it's not a big deal. I think people coming from WoW, you're used to job imbalance being so fucking terrible that you'll have a job that's like here <laughs> or like here <laughs> to where like you are literally bringing down your group by playing it. You should, you're going to have a really hard time playing it. That's not the case here, but people coming from WoW, they come with that mentality, mentality a lot of times. And I want you to know it's okay. All right. Uh, this is not a, this is only going to be a problem for you if you are like literally a world first raider. If you are a world prog person, this is going to be an issue. <laughs> it's not a problem for everybody. And I say that because you might be thinking, well, who, everybody knows that. Everybody knows it's not a problem unless you're like world first and everybody can play any job. All jobs are viable, right? No, because uh, I saw this one. <laughs> this image got shared to me. I'm compelled to talk about it. Right now, paladins don't do as much DPS as the other tanks, but it's only the second floor. So this guy was trying to get into a savage group for the second circle of Asphodelos. The second circle of Asphodelos in Party Finder, okay? Hard and raging the second floor is not a reason to exclude paladins. People need to push their buttons better. So they were trying to get into the savage group in PF for the second circle. And it's like, they're like, hey, uh, the paladin spot is, the pa uh, party finder has paladin locked out. I can join if you want. They reply, do you have a tank besides a paladin? Listen. Paladin is not like shaman in BFA. <laughs> this is a different, this is a whole other rodeo, friends. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. You can clear every fight with every job. Okay, like this is, this is so, this is so cringe to see this. And I know if one person's posted about it, this is not an isolated case. I have no doubt that there are people that are trying to get on the bandwagon of, oh, this job is, this job is worse and this job is good. <laughs> people really, really love doing that. I've seen it. I remember Bard being treated like that for a time in Shadowbringers, actually. Uh, and it's, it's really, really dumb. Because the thing that actually matters in 99.9% .9 of situations can the person play their job well? Because when we look at graphs like this, we are comparing the people that are, we're, comp we're, we're comparing like simulations really, where nothing, no, literally no mistake is ever made. Perfect play, and the absolute best player imaginable from all of these. That's, that's the comparison here. That's not what we're comparing in Party Finder. In Party Finder, we're looking at people that can press the buttons and people that cannot press the buttons. If you're hitting in rage on P2S, people cannot press the button. Okay? <laughs> it's not because... It's not because of this right here. It has to be said. It has to be said. So, uh... In, in any ways, <laughs> any road, what I really wanted to say is that's fantastic that... Uh, Square Enix listening, watching, giving the damage buffs to Paladin, Monk, Samurai, Black Mage, and Dancer. Everybody else seems to be more or less happy. I, I would say I kind of felt like Summoner should have gotten some of a buff, but then again, looking at how 
straightforward. Summoner is to play now. Maybe that's the reason. Didn't get, I don't know, I don't know. But why would I wanna get a Paladin if I'm already enraging with a tank that on average does more damage? If you're in, okay, so if you're enraging with a tank that does more damage. Basically, if you're hitting enrage at all on P2S, it's not because one tank does slightly more damage. It's because people are not pressing their buttons and people are getting hit by mechanics. That's the only, that's the only reason for that. Really, really. So, uh, yeah, you're not enraging because of the tank damage, ever, ever. Enrage means, enrage is a big signal to the group to let you know, <laughs> y'all messed up. Okay, rewatch the guide, all right, work on it. In Shadowbringers, patch 5.08 launched roughly two months after the release of the expansion. The same can be said for Stormblood with patch 4.06. So therefore, perhaps we will see the release of patch 6.08 around February 7th or sometime in the first week of February. So that's just a guess. Now, considering how consistent this patch cycle is in Final Fantasy 14, I think that's a pretty legit guess. And so that's, I'm hoping for that. That's not too far away. We'll see like a little bit of a, but mostly I'm looking forward to the next live letter, which I guess might be around the end of February. Actually, 